Okay, hello, hello. Welcome to Verbling. <laughs> Hi, I'm Teacher Oakley. Uh, welcome to the class. Uh, um, hi there, Jade. Yes. Hi, Jade. Hey. Welcome to the class. Where are you from? Sweden. Sweden. Wonderful. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, I would love to go to Sweden. I've never had the opportunity. Okay. Uh, it's not that far. Okay. Hello, hello. Welcome to Verbling. Hi. I'm Teacher Oakley. Uh, welcome to the class. Uh, Jade, is that coming from you? Jade? Yes. Hi, Jade. Uh, okay. If you can uh, close the Verbling window. We did. Wonderful. All right. Excellent. Otherwise, I hear that. The recording okay. version. Okay. Uh, I would love to go to Sweden, but I've never had the opportunity. Well, okay. Uh, it's it's not that far. Okay. Hello, hello. Welcome to Berlin. You've got to, you've got to close the. Uh, okay. You've got to. Okay, you're muted. Okay. While you're muted. Okay, you've got to close the verbling window tab. Okay. Otherwise, it plays back. Uh, with a little delay on verbling and it, and we hear it again, so everything echoes. So thank you. Anyway, okay. Uh, let me introduce the class and say hello to everyone. Jade, come back. You, you didn't do anything wrong. Okay. Uh, anyway, hello everybody. Uh, today we're gonna wrap up our little mini series we've been doing for the last few days, talking about English intonation. Uh, today, our focus is going to be on intonation patterns. These, uh, this is the one area when we're speaking about intonation where there are definitely guidelines. Uh, we also, you, uh, as part of intonation, we use highlighting where we highlight some specific words and we we low light, <laughs> or we uh, other words we underpronounce. We say them very fast. We don't pronounce full vowel sounds. That's part of intonation. Also, expressive intonation to show emotion. Today, intonation patterns. Intonation patterns are are fairly uh, are very uh, in English are very very kind of set patterns which. Nobody really actually thinks about, all right, in day-to-day -day communication. No one considers the effects of their intonation patterns. But intonation patterns definitely do have specific meanings and uses, which is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so, okay, uh, let me just say hello quickly to everyone. Make sure your microphones are working. Hello. Uh, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello, everyone. Hello. Mark hello. Vincenzo. Hello. Hello, How are everybody. You? Hello, everybody. How are you, hello. Okay. Great. I'm yeah. great. Thank you. Hello, Sophia. Hi, teacher. Nice, nice to see you again. Likewise. I'm very happy to see your face today again in the class. Uh, hello, Sarah. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Sarah. Where are you from? From Spain. Spain. Sarah from Spain. Okay, welcome to the class. Thank you. Uh, great. Um, oh, boy. Con? Quan? Juanita. Again? Juanita. Juanita? Yeah, Juanita. Juanita? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Where are you from? <laughs> Sorry? Malaysia. Oh, excellent. Howdy, neighbor. Uh, I'm American, but I live in uh, the Philippines, so we're neighbors. <laughs> okay. Juanita, I can barely hear your audio. If there's something you can do uh, to, to raise the level, I don't know, speak louder, or if you can adjust your settings, that would be great. Uh, hello to Pavel. Hi, Pavel. Whoa! Hey, how's it going? Ah, it's doing better. I'm doing well. Okay, terrific. Nice to see you again. Uh, nice to see you. 
Okay. Is it Ming? Min? Min? Ming? Sorry, I can't can't actually see your name. Is it Min or Ming? Okay, I'm not sure. All right. Uh, hello, Marcel. Howdy, howdy. How's how's it going? Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing terrific. I'm always terrific, terrific. Marcel. You terrific. Know? Terrific. You are you're finding eighty, right? I, I'm I'm what? <laughs> finding eighty. Variegated. Variegated. What? I yeah. Well. Sure. Yeah. Well, when you are really, really tired, you know, variegated. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no. I'm. I'm good. I have energy. Uh, I. I even have a, an energy drink. Uh, just in case. Uh, right. Right. Okay. Hello, Anton. Welcome to the class. Hello. Hi there. How are you today? Uh, this is my first time, my first class, and, and very All good. Right. Thank you. Excellent. Where are you from, Anton? I'm from Spain, uh, south of Spain. Okay, lovely. Okay, welcome to the class. Nice to have you with us. Thank you. And uh, of course, I've already said hello, Jade. Hello, Jade. Again, is your is your microphone working correctly now? No. No. <laughs> no. Not I can, I can, no, I can hear you. You're okay now. You're good. I think you're okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. All right. First, okay. Intonation is the pitch change that we hear when we speak. My voice rises in pitch and lowers in pitch as I speak English. And that fluctuation up and down pitch is what gives English speech its rhythm, that and the timing. Okay? In really, when we speak English, we fluctuate up and down. Of course, the tones are, or the pitch, it's not like music where you hear ding, you know, do, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Doesn't work like that. It's more like it, there's no notes. It blends in together when we speak. But that's pitch or when we're talking about speaking, intonation. All right, there are certain patterns for uh, intonation in English which we always follow. So most commonly, all right. Uh, are what are called final falling or final rising pitch. Uh, as an example, hang on. As an example, uh, let me pull up a screech here. Here, okay. Basic final falling, final rising. Final meaning at the end of a sentence usually, or possibly at the end of a clause, a, a large group of words. We will use falling or rising intonation. Falling means we speak lower. Or rising, we speak with a higher pitch. For example, this simple phrase, final falling, it's going to rain. Okay, if I use final ri rising intonation, it's going to rain? Do you notice the difference there? Uh, okay. Um, what's, what's the difference? Uh, Sophia, what's the difference? Mm, uh, in, the, in the second one, yes. you're, as, you're asking a question. Indeed. Um, about uh, something that uh, it's going to happen because you see something out uh, of the window, for example. And if in the in the first one, you you are almost sure that uh, it's going to rain. Very good, uh, excellent. In fact, 
that is exactly the main point. The actually these these show different things, but definitely uh, you you hit the keyword, Sophia. Very good. You, I'm sure or certain when I make a statement. Okay, this is one thing. Final falling intonation shows it shows certainty or sh uh, that you're sure of your statement. Also, it's a signal to the listener I'm done speaking when I use falling intonation. Well, actually both, final falling or rising. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. Final falling is a signal you're done speaking and of certainty. Obviously, the same word spoken with rising. Sophia is absolutely correct. It shows uncertainty, which means it turns it into a question. Uh, absolutely. Uh, definitely. Uh, okay. All right. Let's look at these uh, a little more closely. All right. In question forms, this is very important. We can ask questions with both. All right. Uh, for example, uh, Vincenzo, did you have breakfast today? Yes, I have. Had. Okay, Vincenzo answers yes. That is because when we ask a question in English, if we use rising intonation at the end of the question, your answer is going to be yes or no. You can add information, as Vincenzo did, or not. You can simply answer yes or no if you want to. Uh, Vincenzo, what did you have for breakfast? I have a cappuccino with cornetto, and it's like a, a, a sounds <laughs> delicious biscuit. A, a biscuit, a type of pastry. A, a type of pastry with a, a, a little uh, horn. No, two horns. Excellent. <laughs> sounds great. Yes, it's <laughs> very common in Italy. Okay, sounds good to me. All right. All right. Okay. Very good. Now, uh, what did Vincenzo did? He just automatically gave me information. That is because final following questions always ask for information. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, okay, some of you guys I, I know quite well, and some of you some of you I don't. So let's practice a little bit here. Sarah. Yes. Ask me. A question, what do you want to know about Teacher Oakley? <laughs> about you? Yes, ask me a question. Uh, Anything. Where are you from? Okay. Now, uh, since Sarah asked me where are you from, and from is lower, uh, lower pitch, I know she is asking me an information question. I come from Vermont, which is in the United States, okay. in the northeastern part, and I now live in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. It's it's hot here, Sarah. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Very good. Um, let's see, Juanita. All right. Sarah asked me an information question. Juanita, can you ask me a yes or no question? Juanita? Hello? Hello? I can barely hear you. Are you happy now? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> that's a Really deep question, Quadina. Okay. <laughs> Are you happy now? Uh, okay. Make sure that the question... All oh, right. Are you happy now? Okay. Make sure that the question ends with rising intonation. Am I happy now? Yeah, sure. I am, actually. I am. Uh, just before... I'll tell you why. I'll give you information. Because just before class, uh, some workmen delivered a brand new, state-of-the-art, flat-screen TV to my house. Woo! Yay! 
I'm excited. So I'm very happy. Thanks for asking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited. Okay, who brought to you TV? Some workmen uh, from oh, okay. the uh, from whatever place that was. Oh, hi, Michael. By the way. Hello, hello. Welcome. Okay. How much did you give? How much did you pay? Okay. Wait a minute. Rephrase that question, please. You want information? Please use final falling intonation. How okay. much you married? did you pay? <laughs> How much did you pay? How much did you pay? All right, you, you information, right? Pay the end of the question has uh -huh. got to fall. All right. How much uh, did you pay? I paid. Let's just say I got almost fifty percent off. So I got a wow. good deal. So about one thousand dollars. No, paid. no, not that much. <laughs> not that much. Stuff you would be surprised. In the, in the Philippines, things don't cost as much. Electronics, computers, TVs, air conditioners, refrigerators. They're generally cheaper, I think, than they are in Europe or or US. Uh, okay. Pavel, ask me uh, ask me a yes or no question. <coughs> uh, do you show uh, last uh, series of Thrones? Uh, again, and please concentrate on giving me final rising intonation. Uh, do you show last series uh, of Thrones? Oh, did I? Did you see? Did you see? Uh, did, did I see? see? Oh, did, did you see a uh, last series of Thrones? Okay, that's better. Better intonation. No. <laughs> Apparently I did not. I don't even know what that is. What is that? Ah, there's my information question back to Pavel. What is that? <laughs> uh, I... Uh... I think it's uh, uh, most thrones. Uh, oh, popular serials. Oh, right you mean? Now. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Right, right. Um, what is it called? It's it's really like War of Thrones or something of Thrones, right? Game. Of thrones. Game of Thrones. Game okay. Of thrones. Thank you. Now I understand. No, actually, and I'm quite bitter about that no okay so yes or no question and I'm quite bitter about that because in the Philippines they do this all the time they start to play a series on TV and they play maybe the first season and you, you start to like the series but then it disappears they do that all the time they never play a whole series ever so I never watch a series in the Philippines it's just too annoying uh, so the answer is no. Uh, Marcel, oh, I, I want Marcel to ask me uh, an information question, definitely. And first, Marcel, fatigued, fatigued. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got yeah, it. I test. <laughs> okay. I test it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, go ahead. Try an information okay. question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why? Did you decide go to Philippines? <laughs> Why did you decide to go Philippines? <sighs> okay, good intonation. All right, Philippines. Uh, final falling intonation. Uh, okay, a a myriad of reasons. Uh, a myriad is means many, but it's a noun form. A myriad of reasons, actually. Love, money, uh, <laughs> sex. Love, love, love. <laughs> Always love. Uh, political reasons, economic reasons, uh, you name it. A, a lot of reasons. Probably the biggest reason is um, I really felt like I was in the rat race in the United States. Do you know what I mean by the rat race? Rat race. You are a strange person. <laughs> Rat race. 
No, it's it's an it's an idiom in English. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, you're it, doing the same over and over. Yeah, and not really making any progress. Progress. Like, like a rat. You know the rats that run in the circle and that you know they just run and run and run on the yeah. on the wheel. Yeah, well, that's yeah. That, that was my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're Mr. Sincere, okay. <laughs> yeah. Sincerity, sincerity. Yeah, sure, I, I'm honest. I, I'm, yeah, honesty. Sorry, means Mr. Honesty. Yeah. I mean, what That's you said sincere. like a couple of sec seconds ago. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Anyway, lots of reasons, but that was probably the biggest reason is because I was working very, very hard and not getting anywhere. My my life was empty. <laughs> Much better now. Vast improvement. I I advise all all Americans run away from America. It's <laughs> so you are married, aren't you? I am now in in the Philippines, which was another big reason for coming here. But uh, for yeah, that, a bigger reason for staying here is because I got married. Yeah. It's it's curious, you know, because people always say in Europe and uh, the USA is the the field of opportunities, you know the. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, yeah. they do, and and here in Southeast Asia as well. So people look at me funny, <laughs> <laughs> because that's the kind of person I am. I like to do the opposite of ev what everyone else thinks you should do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a rebel, Marcel. Do you have any well, regrets what about, about your friends? What about your friends? Your well, friends fortunately, I don't have any friends, so that's very <laughs> fortunate for me. I have only interest. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Perfect. Good, Michael. Yeah. Very funny. Uh, do you no, have any regrets? I, I okay. do miss some friends, and and as a matter of fact, one of my friends is coming to visit me. Uh, I think in the uh, two or three months. So I'm looking forward to that. One of my best friends from the states. And, and I have your plenty parents. of friends here. What about your parents? Uh, well, there's another aspect. Uh, my parents are dead. They died. My father died when I was 12. Uh, my mother died. Uh, my grandparents are dead. My aunts and uncles are dead. Frankly, my sister's dead. If you really want to know, one of my <laughs> best friends is dead. I, I, I'm not a lucky person. <laughs> you guys might want to run away from yeah, the class, man. I understand, Judy. <laughs> Okay. I, I'm kind of scared to don't be dead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, oh well. That's life. Life and death. Okay, anyway, let's... Uh, okay, Sarah, thanks for joining. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care. Uh, okay, Jade. Jade? Uh, Jade, we've just met. Would you like to ask me a question? Uh, yes. Uh, first, I'm so sorry to hear your tragedy life. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. okay. To go on. And uh, uh, how did you adjust you from uh, American move to Philippine, the new country? How did you adjust? How do I adjust? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That could be a series of about 50 different classes, Jade. <laughs> you know, well, I'm still uh, adjusting, actually. Yeah. Uh, how long have you been there? Been here for six years now. How okay, you, you know, there? you and me, we have a lot of in common. I have yeah. been uh, moved from two countries, and finally I stayed in Sweden. So, uh, okay. But I'm uh, still uh, uh, struggling. <laughs> Even though I stayed in Sweden for 10 years. <laughs> okay, so I, when I say I'm still adjusting, you understand perfectly yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where are you from originally, Jade? Uh, China. China, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, notice that sentence I just used. Where are you from originally, Jade? Uh, I still use the falling, uh, falling intonation on originally. And then yeah. comma Jade, all right. Yeah. I, I'm still using the pattern, even though I say someone's name after the question. Okay. Interesting. Very cool. Okay. We we have a lot to talk about, Jade. But 
let me uh, ask Anton if he has a question for me. Anton, uh, we just met, so why don't you uh, ask me an information question? Mm. Okay, oh, excuse me, a question. Do you regret something from the USA? Do I regret something? I'm regret starting to. I'm starting to regret. Uh, I'm starting to regret Obama. <laughs> 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 Quite honestly. <laughs> oh my goodness. Do you feel in the. Uh, you miss Obama. Obama. <laughs> miss I miss Obama? Yeah. <laughs> our, I miss Sorry, our golf but, games. Yeah. But you were to, uh, asking to Anton or. <laughs> yes, I was. Yeah, uh, Anton. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Please, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, what do you know about Spanish culture? Okay, what do you know about Spanish culture? Okay, <laughs> well, that's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, dear. Well, I'll tell you something, Anton. I, okay, uh, I live, in, I told you I live in the Philippines now. Well, I'm sure mm -hmm. you probably understand that the Philippines was a Spanish colony for 300 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in reality, I'm living in a country with a very strong Spanish influence, right now, every day. <laughs> um, the language has many Spanish words still in the Philippine native language in Tagalog. The architecture, especially in the older parts. Uh, so I probably am influenced by Spanish culture more than even I understand. I probably know more than I think I know. <laughs> uh, strangely enough, uh, I know that your your country is about the culture. Um, well, you know, like most of Europe, you've had your ups and downs, and unfortunately, right now it's more of a down, <laughs> right? But uh, you know. Kings and queens, and uh, I don't know. I could rattle off some history, but I, I don't think that's what you mean. But anyway, <laughs> you know something uh, though uh, that's interesting to me is how very similar Mexican culture is to Filipino culture, mm -hmm. because they were both heavily influenced by Spain. Mm -hmm. You would be surprised. Yeah. Yes, I think the Spanish culture is uh, a mister of culture because we are yeah. we, we have a big influences about Italian culture, Roman heritage, and African heritage, uh, Arabian yeah. heritage, uh, Celtic heritage, uh, and so we are always uh, celebrating all this culture, and so <laughs> we yeah. are always happy. <laughs> the best things of every culture is. Uh, Feast. <laughs> ah, right. Okay. And the uh, the other thing I know is I love tapas. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. The only person who hasn't got a question from me, uh, Sophia. Go. Uh, I just met you yesterday, so you can ask an information question. Sophia, what do you want to okay. know? Um. Um, have, uh, excuse me. Um, did you ha did you have a good dinner yesterday? <laughs> Wait a minute. Is that a yes or no question or an information question? Ah, uh, uh, yes or no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> did you have a good dinner yesterday? <laughs> Yesterday it should definitely go up for yesterday. No question. Did you have a good dinner yesterday? I don't even remember. <laughs> uh, I forgot what I had for dinner yesterday. Oh yeah, I had uh, I had a okay. This is embarrassing. I, I had a bizarre dinner yesterday, okay, a strange dinner. Uh, it was, okay, I had 
this is a totally international dinner. I had sausage, but they were chicken sausage, curried chicken sausage. So curry flavor chicken sausage with uh, wrapped in tortilla shells like from Mexico because I didn't have any bread. I, I was going to make a sausage sandwich, but I realized after I cooked, I had no bread. So I I made a sausage sandwich in a tortilla with uh, Mexican salsa and also German mustard <laughs> and uh, yeah tortilla <laughs> yeah that's right Marcel perfect <laughs> and I also had rice and uh, <laughs> um, rice and a little bit of leftover Filipina food called sinigang. <laughs> So because it was your stomach would agree with this, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. I, I uh in English, uh, Vincenzo, I you can say I have an iron stomach. I can eat anything. It's, iron it's, iron it's, stomach. It doesn't matter what I eat. I eat totally crazy food. Was it very spicy or not? Was it very spicy? No. I um no, not too not not so bad. Not mm. too so bad. That, that's good. Uh, yeah. But yeah. uh I had a weird dinner. I eat weird food. <laughs> yes. So, sorry, teacher. I have a question. Sure. You know, I, I am I am very curious. You say tortilla, but tortilla it's no English name. It's a specific name from Tagalog. Really? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I asked you. Sorry. Okay. For as an American, I I just know from Mexico tortillas, of course, traditionally made with corn, corn tortillas. Or there are flour tortillas. There's sort of a very, very flat bread, right? You can fry them. Okay, okay. If you want to. Or but, you don't have to, but. Yeah, yeah but it's not an, an English word, right? It's a, you know, yet another English word we stole from another place, yes. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. And the other day, I, I remember you say channel as well. You say people in Philippines go. We are channel, you know, channel, sweet trainer. They what? Say again. Channel, channel. You say channel. People in Philippines used to wear channel. Used yeah, to. Do you remember? No. <coughs> channel is sweet trainer, sweet trainer. You know. Which? No, you lost me. Can you? For can you where? Type it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just Please. a moment. Let, sure. let me just a moment. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <coughs> this is for track, wearing. Track, track suite. Sorry, track suite. But you say channel. Track, track suit. suit. Track yeah. suit. Yeah, sorry. Track <laughs> suit. Yeah. Okay. But you, the other day, say people in Philippines. Oh, pajamas. To, sorry? When I was talking about pajamas? No, not pajamas. No, no, no. Okay. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, all right. All no, right. Don't worry, don't worry. Okay. Thank you. All right. <laughs> sorry. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Anyways. Uh, okay, questions. That is one place we use final falling and final rising intonation. All right. Uh, another case, we always use final rising intonation uh, for uh, asking for repetition. That means I didn't hear you. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if we're using very simple expletive grunts mm -hmm. and groans. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Huh? <laughs> Right, rising intonation. What? Okay. For example, I can say I can use rising or falling with one word. I can say what, and that means please repeat. What? Or I can say what. What? Uh, it means give me information. What? Uh, okay. Uh, for example, all right. My wife says, uh, um, okay, uh, 
uh, I need you to make dinner. And I say, what? And she would say, I need you to make dinner. And I might say, what? As in, what do you want me, what do you, what do you want me to make for dinner? What? <laughs> so my intonation changes. It changes the meaning of the word. Okay. Uh, all right. Asking for repetition. Doesn't matter. Come again. All right. Even if we're quite formal. Pardon me, would you mind repeating that? All right, still, on that, my intonation is going to rise at the end of the sentence. Uh, yes. And come right. again, how is it used? Come, come again? Come again, yes, uh, when? Uh, do you, does anybody know any, any more uh, expressions for asking somebody to repeat information? Uh, op open question, anybody? What are other Could words? That? Could you repeat uh, that? Very good. Please repeat. Please repeat. Yeah. It's possible. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me. Ah, oh, very good, Sophia. Excellent. Excuse I'm me. I'm sorry. I didn't catch that. All right. More formally. <laughs> All right. I, did, I didn't catch that. Is a good one. All right. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Okay. Yeah. Right. I apologize. Could you repeat, please? <laughs> okay. Well. All right. There's going to be many formal, formal, uh, formal kinds. Really? Uh, that's different. Really? Ah, that's different. You're jumping ahead of the class. Okay. I'm going to talk about that. Exactly how you said. Really? Just hold your horses. We're going to get there in just a minute. Okay. Um, sometimes very abbreviated. Huh? Or hmm? Even my lips together and M sound. Hmm? Mm. That, that can mean please repeat. All right. Mm. Uh, okay. That's different from mm, no, teacher. A little bit, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a very weird thing. The uh, <laughs> You know, uh, like in the chat box, the whole mm sound. Mm. It can mean <laughs> so many things in English. It can mean delicious. Mmm. Mmm. It could mean you're bored. Mmm. Or frustrated. Mmm. Or it could mean please repeat. Mmm. Yes. Or it could mean you're confused. Mmm. 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 Or it could mean disbelief. Mmm. Okay. Could be, no? right. Yes, it could be. A lot of meanings on that one. You're absolutely right. Well, and actually, that, that's an excellent. Actually, it's funny you bring that up. That's an, really an excellent uh, sort of a uh, example of intonation. It, it's just a sound. It's an M sound, and it has like five or six totally different meanings depending on the intonation you use when you make the sound. So there you go. Uh, here's another final, uh, not really final, but rising intonation is also used to show the speaker is not finished speaking. Okay, you might, for example, hear this when somebody's given directions and they have to stop and even a native speaker has to think, oh, okay, how do I get there? Uh, let's see. And they're thinking as they're speaking. Okay, so for example, uh, you need to get to the library. Okay, go about three blocks, then take a left, uh, one more block, and it should be on your right. Okay, really stretched vowel sounds in about, take a long, long vowel sound should be on your right. Okay, this is uh, very common. And by the way, if any of you people are planning on taking an IELTS or a TOEFL or a TOEIC test, rather than, uh, rather than have a long pause on one of those tests, pauses, very bad, 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 bad on those tests. Uh, sometimes you can't think of what you want to say. All right, there's a lot of pressure. Very understandable. 
you might consider using this as a hesitation device while you're trying to think. If you do this, not every other word, of course, but if you do this a few times during the exam, this actually helps your score. It doesn't hurt. This is an accepted and reasonable way to hesitate and think while you're speaking. Okay? It's okay to do this. This is socially, grammatically, totally accepted and in very considered normal English. Uh, okay, so that's the idea. We, we use it to show the speakers not finished speaking. All right, so the listener doesn't jump in and start speaking. We stretch the vowel and have a slowly rising kind of intonation. Okay. All right, who said, who said, really? <laughs> Who said that? Was that Anton? Is that you? No. Marcel. Marcel. No. Me. Marcel? Me, teacher. Me. Ah, yeah. okay. All right. Well, all right. Then this this brings up our next topic. We're going to try this. Okay. This is interesting. All right. Uh, okay. This is two things, really. This is both an intonation pattern and it is expressive intonation. Okay, when Marcel said really all right, he went up very very high in the middle and then a little drop at the end. Really? Uh, that is actually he's following a pattern that shows disbelief that you don't believe something. Really? Are you sure? Are you Sure. Okay. It has very extre extremely high and big drop, big change in pitch. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, it shows you you don't really trust. Very similarly, when we're shocked or surprised. Okay. Uh, we we kind of do the opposite thing. We start high, go low, and then end high. It may, you, so we may be expressing a question. Uh, what are you doing? So it may, what are you doing? A small hook, a small hook at the end because why, why? Does anybody know why? Why is there a small do wing? Why do I do that? Anybody? Why? Because what are you doing? Because it's an information question. So I have to I have to use final falling intonation. I have to follow, follow that first pattern. So the wild fluctuation in pitch, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, uh, okay, it still has to have a little bit of falling intonation at the end. That final falling or rising intonation, especially for questions, is just really always followed. The interesting thing about that <clears throat> is it's followed unconsciously. No one thinks about this, okay? No one considers it. So, for example, in English, if the salesman, a salesman is stupid if he says, would you like to buy my product? Final rising intonation, okay? Uh, Pavel, would you like to buy my product? Uh, I want to uh, to uh, say answer. Yeah, how, how can you, in English you have no choice. You either have to say yes or no. You don't actually have a choice. Ah, okay. Uh, All right. All right. So, let's say you say no. Okay. Would no. you like to buy my product? The listener also knows the pattern. The listener feels like they're obligated this pattern is very deep in their brains. We learn these patterns when we're babies. So an English speaker, 
would it, uh, without uh, unconsciously would you automatically answer yes or no? Well, people don't generally answer you know yes about buying things, even if they want it. So it's a very uh, a salesman who asks you to buy in that way using a yes or no final rising intonation question. <clears throat> it's very foolish. Instead, a salesman should do like this. Pavel, would you like to buy product A or product B? Uh, <laughs> uh, I will <laughs> uh, I would like I would like uh, uh, I would like uh, to buy product B a product B. Okay. Uh, product B. Excellent. Okay. Yes, Michael, you could have neither of them. Yes, and of course, of course, th there's no ironclad rules, and of course, people asked yes or no questions can give information, and people asked yes information questions can answer yes or no. However, these patterns are very subconscious. Nobody thinks about this. So if you ask, and by the way, the rising questions, these are called closed-ended questions. The, the, you have to answer it a certain way. These are closed-ended questions. Uh, okay, it, you have to answer yes or no. Open-ended questions means the person can answer any way they want. They can explain anything they want. So falling, final falling intonation questions are, are open-ended. You, you can explain, you can say anything you want. <clears throat> so, the idea being that we can use this idea to psychologically manipulate people. Yes, in fact, we can. <laughs> yes. By asking... Uh, what was that? <laughs> that was my evil, evil laugh. laugh. Evil laugh? <laughs> yes, that oh was... Oh, my God. In fact, I startled. My, my evil laugh. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, so a, a good salesman doesn't ask closed-ended questions, never. Uh, they would ask uh, many open-ended questions until they get the answer they want. So it, it's definitely used in... And um, if you think about it, if you see advertising, you'll see the same thing. If sometimes advertising, advertisers will use, you know, questions in their in their advertisements, rhetorical type questions, but they're always, uh, they're almost always uh, open-ended questions. Anyway, a little psychology. Okay. Uh, okay, you're shocked, you're surprised, you're going to say, oh my goodness, all right. How would you say that? Uh, let's see. Anton, you're going to be very surprised. I'm going to go backwards this time. You're shocked. You're stunned. You're amazed. Okay. Uh, I okay. I'm going to tell you more information. All right. I I want you to read this one. I've highlighted. Okay. Uh, Anton, I'm actually an alien from outer space. Anton. Yes, I don't understand uh, what uh, happened. I would like you that. to. I would like you to respond to me, showing surprise, when I tell you I am actually an alien from outer space. Yes. So. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness! All right, with with feeling, Anton. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Holy <laughs> smokes! <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, okay, okay, what about my gosh? My gosh. My okay. gosh. What, what my is it? What? gosh. Yeah. My gosh, that shows that you're uh, uh, surprised. Yeah. Yes, my goodness oh. is a word. Gosh, what is it, gosh? Goodness what? is a word. Gosh, okay. All right, well, here's another part <laughs> of English. I guess you guys need to know. All right. Gosh. Gosh. Yes, it is. Uh, there is a meaning. Gosh, frankly, is the polite way to say God. 
in English got... culture, and actually probably Italian culture, Spanish culture, Russian culture. Uh, it, of course, uh, in you know, being a primarily Western Western cultures that were, you know, Catholic or Christ, Christian religions, um, it's uh, a bad thing to bad. take the Lord's names in in vain. You're not supposed to swear using God or Jesus or hell. So we've invented little ways to get around that kind of <laughs> those rules. Yeah. So instead of saying, as Marcel said, what the hell is that? I would say, what the heck is that? Ooh, there's my surprise. All right. What the heck is that? Hmm. Not, cool. Say hell. not cool. Not cool. Well, we say gosh instead of God. We say jeesh. Jeesh instead of jeesh. Jesus. Jeesh. Uh, oh, jeez. Oh jeez! Oh jeez! What the heck is that? <laughs> okay. And so cool, no? Cool. No. What? Cool. 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 I don't know that one. I know. C O O L. C O O O. I don't know. That cool is just cool. Yes. <laughs> I think cool is just cool. No. Uh, gosh is a polite way to say God. Heck, a polite way to say hell. Darn. A polite way to say damn. Gosh darn it. Where the heck is he? Okay. All right. I've just cursed and cursed, but it's perfectly polite to say that in English. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. What the heck are you doing? All right. Uh, Jade. Uh, Jade. Uh, okay, I tell you something to... Uh, okay, uh, all right. Uh, you see me jumping up and down with a bag of marshmallows on my head. Excuse teacher, my mask go now. Bye, teacher. Thank you. Okay, uh, bye, Vincenzo. Take care. Jade? Yes? I, okay, try this phrase to show surprise or disbelief. Okay. What on earth are you doing? What on earth are you doing? Very good. It was going very high at the end. That was good. Excellent. What on earth are you doing? Okay, Marcel. Uh, uh, monkey, 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 banana, walrus, penguin, purple, yeah. sneaker. About the, the last one, what, what is the meaning? Okay. All right, you're going to say this. Uh, I'm going to tell you the purple monkey eats uh, red bananas as he swims on the Martian desert highways. Yeah, but, but uh, no, what, are, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, but, but I, I, I said about what on earth are you doing? What, what is the meaning? Oh, what on earth are you doing? Uh, okay. Um, what on earth are you doing? This is a very common expression. It uh, basically means uh, you don't understand what actions someone is doing. Uh, they could be direct actions right now. They could be, uh, why do you keep making faces at the boss at work? What on earth are you doing? Are you trying to get fired? Okay. Is is the same if, if I say what are you doing? Is the same. Yes, it is. But uh, okay. the the on earth part is used yeah. to add emphasis. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. <laughs> what are you talking about? All right. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. All right. We've only got a couple minutes left. So all right. Uh, I covered this yesterday, so really briefly, uh, listing intonations, when we're listing anything, whether we're adding more and more information or we're giving a choice, we're going to always use this pattern. The winter months are December, January, and February. In other words, up, up, down. If it's only two things, would you like chicken or the fish? All right, up, down. It doesn't matter how many things. 
And it doesn't matter if you're listing phrases. I like swimming in the ocean, hiking in the mountains, and just relaxing at home with a good book. All right. Rise, rise, fall. Last. We've just got a couple minutes. All right. There's another weird kind of intonation. It's called drop rise intonation. I consider this more like customer service intonation. Uh, let's see, Michael, you, you want to give this a shot? Let's get. Let's hear your customer service English voice. Good. Good afternoon. Thank you for calling Member Services. How can I help you today? Very good, Michael. That was excellent. All right. Uh, okay, very good. Good afternoon. Thank you for calling Member Services. Okay, what we have is called drop rise because sometimes the, the very normal uh, intonation is reversed and it's also very quick up and down. And nobody really talks like this in real life. Uh, I don't say, hello, Sophia. Welcome to the verbling class today. What can I possibly teach you today? Uh, nobody actually talks like that. We also use this sort of intonation when, we, when we're talking to strangers. Uh, Juanita, are you there? Yeah. Juanita, yeah. can you try this simple sentence you might say to a stranger on a bus? Excuse me? Is this you have got to fix your audio. I can barely hear you. Yes. Excuse me, is this the second? Okay. No. <laughs> no. Uh, no, go ahead. Okay, I can hear you, but uh, Kwanina, you may, because I'm only in the Philippines and you're in Malaysia, maybe you could just open the window and shout. <laughs> Perhaps I can hear you. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, tr please. Try to fix that, okay? Um, uh, for for next time, I can barely hear you. It's really hard to hear you, and I, w I definitely want to hear you, especially talking about intonation. Sophia, can you try the first one? Let's hear your customer service intonation. Good afternoon. Thank you for calling Memory Services. How can I help you today? Ooh, you're a natural. Ooh, do you do customer service? No. <laughs> really? You should. You're hired. That was really terrific. That was perfect. Wow, I'm impressed. Okay. Pavel. All right, let's try okay. this one. <coughs> the next one. Stranger on a uh, bus. Excuse me. Is this seat taken? Okay. Yes. Okay, very good. <laughs> All right. But a, a little a little softer on the excuse me and a little more a little more rise. Excuse me, is this seat taken? Pavel, you sounded a little Russian there. I, I thought you were angry at me. Excuse me! <laughs> <laughs> Give me the seat. A little, a little scary. <laughs> Excuse me! <laughs> I'm sitting here. Okay, okay. Calm down. All right, fine. Oh, no problem. Uh, I'm joking <laughs> with you, Pavel. Right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Jade, Jade. Let's hear your customer service voice, Jade. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for calling member service. How can I help you today? Okay. All right. Not bad. Member services. Don't forget the don't forget uh, to fully pronounce the word there. All right. Services. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Marcel? How about the last one? Yeah. Excuse me, is this seat taken? Uh, okay. That was perfect. That was very good. Uh, so you sounded very native there, Marcel. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. Thanks a lot. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, I had fun, but it's time for me to go. Thank you so much for joining my class today. <laughs> Thank you very much. But it's time to no go. No problem, Sarah Oakley. <laughs>
Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.